Tricky new gadgets from the two new Moroccan operators will introduce new threats as you battle for supremacy on a new map set in the beautiful North African countryside. Let's meet Nomad. Two speed, two armor, and one brand new way to augment your attack. The Air Jab Launcher. Air jab Attached to Nomad's primary weapons, this baby fires air jabs. Sticky, proximity-triggered air blast grenades that shove operators back and throw them to the ground. The proximity trigger means you can deploy it as a trap to cover your flank, or go on the offensive and use it to knock defenders out of cover. Operators who get air jabbed are unable to shoot while they recover, so it's very effective for making a dug-in Mira take a seat for a few crucial moments, or knocking a clash down, forcing her to place her shield on her back while she collects herself. The air jab charge doesn't do any damage by itself, but it will knock down you and your teammates if you're caught in its blast radius, so placement is key. In the right situation, you might leave a defender calling desperately for Doc. Or you might knock your victim clear through a destructible wall, which is always hilarious. The air jab is an anchored in defender's worst nightmare, unless they've got Jaeger's ADS close by to neutralize it. With her power to knock people around, Nomad excels at putting defenders where they don't want to be, on their backs, out of cover, and exposed to the attacking team not to mention your AK-74 or ARX-200 assault rifles. And when it comes to guarding a planted bomb diffuser, Nomad's air jab can mean the difference between a bitter defeat and sweet, sweet victory. A devious student is only as good as her wily teacher, and luckily for Nomad, her teacher was Kaid. While Nomad deals in knockdowns, Kaid makes his mark with electricity and his Artilla Electro Claws bring a whole new way to electrify reinforced surfaces, barbed wire, and deployable shields. An Electro Claw can be thrown from a distance and will grab on tightly, electrifying any reinforced surface in its area of effect, meaning that you can easily electrify reinforced hatches from below. With his three Electro Claws smartly deployed, Kaid can electrify all of this. Their small size and deployment versatility makes Electro Claws difficult to spot and pick off. Even Maverick will have a tough time locating them because their area of effect means they don't need to be placed directly on the reinforced surfaces they're electrifying. The electro claw is on. But that doesn't mean they're invincible. IQ can easily spot them, Thatcher's EMP grenades can destroy them, and Twitch's drone can shoot them. And keep in mind that they take a few seconds to activate. So, while a quick throw will help you counter a Hibana breach, by the time you hear a Thermite breaching, it'll be too late for Electroclaw intervention. As a 1-speed, 3-armor operator, Kaid is a strong anchor for any defending team, and he can do significant damage with his AUG A3 SMG. Or, if you're feeling bold, take his TCSG-12 semi-automatic shotgun, which fires a single powerful slug and can support an ACOG. Both Nomad and Kaid pack a powerful 44 Magnum sidearm that comes equipped with an ACOG equivalent scope, so you're ready for a firefight at any range. The action you've been seeing here takes place on Fortress, the free new map coming with Operation Wind Bastion. You may have noticed a few portraits of Kaid hanging up around the place. That's because the Moroccan structure is both a military training facility and Kaid's home. The fortress map was inspired by Moroccan Kasbah architecture, but don't let all the intricate mosaics and the colorful stained glass windows distract you. The map features two interior floors with two objective sites per mode on each. With plenty of exterior stairs, the ability to rappel to the rooftop from nearly all sides, and towers that provide entry into the second floor that only attackers can access, Fortress offers plenty of ways for the attacking team to methodically close in on objectives from above. Defenders can lock down the first floor Hammam bombsite by funneling attackers into the showers, while attackers can counter by locking down defender rotations with long lines of sight between the bomb locations in the Hammam and sitting room. Each objective site offers its own distinct tactics, and it'll be up to you to discover them all. Operation Wind Bastion is set to deliver one hell of a knockout punch to Siege's third year.
For more on Rainbow Six Siege, subscribe to this channel and